Hi everybody, so I just wanted to show you my setup at the moment that I've got for capturing, capturing the images from the International Space Station during the Slow Scan TB event. So here on my laptop I'm running three bits of software which I'll, I'll cover shortly. Now at the moment um, the um, SDR that I'm using is just an SDR um, version 4 dongle. And it's currently connected to my QFH antenna, which is normally um, used for NOAA weather satellites. But I've disconnected it and connected it up to this so I can, um, in theory, get a better signal. But it's just an experiment at the moment, so we'll see how well it goes. So the three bits of software I've got running at the moment is I've got the SDR software, the AirSpy. And I've got MMSSTV and I've got Gpredict as well. So most people will be familiar with AirSpy. So that's the obviously the radio software that you can use um, to listen to anything on. So that's the main bit of software. And the other bit of software is the MMSSTV. Now this is the software that's decoding um, the actual SSTV images. Now... I've also got a third bit of software here called Gpredict. Now, let me just explain why I've got Gpredict running. Um, the basic reason is the, the frequency that the SSTV event are, is on is 145.800. That's narrow band, narrow band FM, and I've got a bandwidth spacing of about 9,000 odd at the moment set on this. Now, because it's a satellite and it's moving around in space, it's subject to what's called the Doppler effect, where the signal and the frequency go up and down dependent on the location. Now, you can leave your radio tuned to 145-800. And in theory, when the satellite passes directly, the International Space Station, sorry, passes directly over your location, you will get a perfect signal on 145-800. But to catch it just before and just after, ideally, you need... Um, something that will adjust the Doppler effect and that is what this Gpredict software is doing. Now if I just move my um, AirSpy over a bit you'll see here I've got something called Gpredict connector installed um, and it's ticked there and it says it's connected. Now what this is, this is a, a very simple file that you install on your PC and copy into a directory and uh, it basically links to the Gpredict software so the GPDIC software is actually controlling the frequency of the radio when that is ticked. So let me just move that back out of the way for you. And let's go back to GPDIC. And this is my GPDIC here. You can see um, I'm there and the ISS is well out of the way at the moment. So we've got no um, passes. Now, what I've done here in GPDIC, uh, I've got the radio control set up and I've got it set to this particular mode here, Crew R2 plus 3, which is 145-800 megahertz, subject to the Doppler effect. So it's adjusting the frequency here in GPredict and it's sending that to RTL SDR, the radio, which is, you know, running in the AirSpy software. So that's the frequency that GPredict is doing there sends it back to AirSpy, basically. Um, now, what what happens then when a satellite comes over? The um, signal, the noise, sorry, generated by the signal, which is a number of dots and things like that, um, is then sent to MMSSTV, which decodes the image. Now, I've got MMSSTV set to auto mode. The mode for um, this satellite says P120 for the International Space Station event. But if you just leave it on auto, auto will do fine. The only option that you may need to change in here, this is from a fresh installation, so while it's in my mind, is tick auto slant. If you don't tick auto slant, some of your images might be slanted, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's the setting that you need to change. Um, the only other thing I've got set in here that I had to change to get working is the virtual sound card. And that sends the audio from AirSpy to MMSSTV using a virtual sound card. So we're inputting 
the virtual recording device here and on the RTL SDR we're outputting to the virtual um, audio cable. It's a virtual audio cable and um, there's different ones available that you can use. So what I'll do is I'll just very briefly show you my control panel on this laptop and you'll hopefully understand that a bit better. I'll just cancel that there. So if I um, open sound here, we see there we've got virtual playback, virtual audio cable. So that's the virtual audio cable playing back virtual recording there. So that's the noise that you can see, the little dots going up and down. That's obviously the background noise of um, no signal. So that's how it's set in there and there's different free versions of virtual audio cable that you can use but i've got virtual audio cable installed there is different types as well of this software so pick the one that uh, works best for you it can be a bit tricky to get it going but once you get it going it's fine you've just got to remember your output to that virtual audio cable um, in airspy and in mms stv that virtual audio cable is going to be your input so it doesn't matter about the output unless you wish to somehow monitor it or whatever but there you go now i found the volume here is about halfway now if i up the volume here you'll see it goes red so i'm just going to drop the volume down in air spy so it's roughly almost halfway in mms stv i found that's the best setting for me you may need to um, tweak it differently on your setup so because i'm using this qfh antenna at the moment the band is actually quite quiet because it, the qfh is actually tuned to 137 megahertz for the NOAA satellites so it's slightly off to this but i mean there's an example of an image um on screen here that you can see that i've actually received today and it's not too bad an actual quality image it wasn't a brilliant pass over so it wasn't a you know full crystal clear pass so i'm quite happy with the quality of that that image I've, i mean i've had mixed quality i've had some where they're just totally blank and other ones where you only capture a little bit of the um, image like that but yeah i mean i've had a couple of um reasonable passes that where you've got reasonable quality images um i'm yet to get a full perfect image i think i might need to put my antenna outside to get that unless i get one that comes you know directly over and i just catch the um, sstv signal at the right time because i believe it's only transmitting um i think it has like a one or two minute break between each transmission so it's just catching that transmission at the right time when it comes over your house it's pure luck as to when it's going to happen you know you can't um you can't change anything like that it's just uh just down to luck when it passes over so yeah i just thought i'd uh, show you that um while this um sstv event is going on for the international space station and hopefully you're getting some images yourself as well um i have switched between a like originally i was using a disco and aerial and i switched to this uh, qfh an antenna just as a bit of an experiment um really to see what the quality of the images are now i did notice last time they did this event it must be 12 months or more ago um i got some really good quality images just from my disco and um this time i've not had as much luck with the disco and that's why i, I switched to the qfh so i don't know um the reasons for that now another thing just to notice if you're in any of the facebook groups or anything like that um for the international space station you'll notice that a lot of the images people are posting are they seem a little bit blurred in the quality i don't know why that is now they did turn the sstv off um on friday it was when they did a schools contact and since they've turned it back on again i think the quality of the images are slightly improved so i don't know if it's something to do with maybe people were saying it was overheating or something like that and that's why the images were very very slightly blurred i don't know nobody really has answered that um question so yeah hope, hopefully you're getting some images that's how i've got mine set up at the moment 
there we go we've got some um, TLE files I need to um, update it's telling me as well uh, yeah so gpredict again there's a bit of a configuration to do with gpredict to set it up there's online guides for that if you want to know how to link all this together then um, do follow some of the online guides that dependent upon the software that you're using of course you don't have to use mmsftv you don't have to use gpredict and you don't have to use airspy you can use other combinations of software and dependent on how you use them will be depending on what um, settings you need to do but uh, this is the, this is the configuration i've got and this is the way i've been using it i was thinking about swapping to some different software um but we shall see this is not the primary software i'm using I'm not using airspy a lot of the time i'm using sdr connect which i've posted some other videos about but there's not a um, a link a software link that you can do where you can add these plugins between gpredict and other things in sdr connect only in airspy you've got that um, option to do that so yeah i'll just show you briefly the other settings i've got in here as i mentioned um it is narrow bound uh, narrow band fm that we've got set there and it is basically roughly a 9000 bandwidth you may need to play with that anywhere between i'd say eight nine thousand and ten thousand okay everybody thanks for watching this video hope you've enjoyed it hope you're getting some good images from the international space station if you've got any questions or comments please let me know Thanks for watching, everybody.